LDAC, LHDC, Aptex Adaptive, Aptex Lossless. These are the four main high res or lossless Bluetooth audio codecs. And I have vigorously tested all of them out over the last few years with tons of true wireless earbuds, streaming services, and devices. And what I've learned is that it's a bit of a mess to get them to actually work properly. But if you can get them to work properly, is it even worth the sound quality improvement that you get? Well, I'm gonna answer that question today. But first, let's talk about the different codecs that are out there. I'm just covering the main ones here. So there's SBC, AAC, Aptex, Aptex Adaptive, LDAC, LHDC, and Aptex Adaptive Lossless. And they all have a varying speed of data transferred, which is represented as kilobits per second. This also goes by the name bitrate. AAC has the lowest at 256 kilobits per second, Aptex Lossless the highest at 1200 kilobits per second. Some sources will state it's over a thousand kilobits per second. This is actually very tricky information to find out for some reason. And this trend of not knowing completely what you're actually getting, uh, will continue throughout this video. So you're getting over four times the amount of transfer speed going from AAC to Aptex lossless. So does that mean you're getting four times the audio quality? Definitely not. Now there's also bit depth. This represents a dynamic range. Basically, the higher the bit depth, the greater detail you can get with your sound. Now this is more of a focus for producers or people mixing and mastering tracks. So honestly, a bit out of my expertise. I've never mixed or mastered anything. I mix the audio for these videos, but I'm, I'm a beginner. But anyway, it seems like the general consensus is that if you have at least 24-bit when you're creating music or audio, that's more than enough. You can also get 16-bit, 32-bit, and I kind of think of it like filming your video in 4K then exporting in 1080p should look better than filming in 1080p and exporting in 1080p. Maybe not the best example. Anyway, most codecs here use 16-bit, LHDC can go up to 24-bit, LDAC can go up to 32-bit. But Aptex Lossless only has 16 bits, but they have the highest bit rate. So what's going on there? Well, the third component to this confusing mix of numbers is sample rate, which is represented by kilohertz. So the sample rate is the number of times a file is sampled each second in the audio stream. This goes as high as 192 kilohertz for LHDC and the lowest 44.1 kilohertz for AAC and Aptex Lossless. Generally for audio to be regarded as high res, you need at least 48 kilohertz. So that's why Aptex Lossless isn't considered high res, it's considered lossless. Only LDAC, LHDC, and Aptex Adaptive High res get the high res badge. So now that we have all three numbers for all the codecs, uh, you can do a bit of math and that's gonna give you your actual bit rate. So let's do Aptex Lossless. So if you get 16 bit, you times that by 44.1 and you times it by two, that's gonna give you 1,411 kilobits per second as the bit rate. So this is what they regard as CD quality. It's just been the industry standard for CDs because when they created it, they thought, okay, this is probably good enough for most people's hearing. But wait a sec, isn't the maximum bit rate of Aptex lossless 1,200 kilobits per second, not 1,411? That's right, so I actually don't know why they call it Aptex lossless because the idea of it is that it's supposed to stream at CD quality without losing anything. But you're losing 211 kilobits per second there. So now I'm no expert, but that doesn't seem like lossless, but it's called lossless, so I don't know. I thought lossless meant streaming the full file without any loss. So should it really be called Aptex lossless because all the other codecs are considered like lossy codecs? So let's do another calculation. If you get 24 bit times that by 192 times that by two, you're getting 9,216 kilobits per second, where if we look at LHDC, the maximum bit rate is 1,000 kilobits per second. So a little bit of loss there. And this kind of raises a question, at least for me, like, is it better to stream the Aptex lossless, almost CD quality, or you're better off streaming at the high bit rate and high kilohertz range, but at a lower bit rate? And I honestly couldn't, I can't find any information on this, to be honest. All that I do have is my own listening experience. Like I said, with all the devices, codecs and streaming services, uh, which I will get to a bit later. So if you're not following the whole number situation here, don't worry, I, I don't completely understand it myself. But before we run through that, we need to talk about the different streaming services out there as well. Because sadly, it gets even more confusing. So you've all probably heard about Spotify. This is gonna stream like what's considered classic MP3 files at 320 kilobits per second. Where a streaming service like Apple Music will actually stream 24-bit 192 kilohertz. So that works well on an iPhone, but only if you're using a wide connection because iPhones use the AAC codec, which has a maximum bit rate of 256 kilobits per second. And that's streaming over Bluetooth. 
and it gets more confusing on Mac OS because you have to use like an extension. I think it's called a lossless switcher extension or you have to go into your MIDI settings to make sure it is streaming at 24 bit 192 kilohertz. 196, 192, 196 kilohertz. There's a lot of numbers here, bear with me. Luckily, some Android devices use LHDC, which can output at 24 bit 196 kilohertz. But if you're gonna use Apple Music on Android, it's gonna down sample to 48 kilohertz. And this is more of an issue with the Android operating system. So some apps do work, other apps don't. Cause you have plenty of other options like Amazon HD, uh, Deezer, Cobuzz, and they all have their own unique issues. They down sample, but you can download like extension apps to make sure it doesn't downsample. But anyway, it seems like the only app to just do it naturally without an extension is Tidal. So there you go, you can use Tidal. The only issue with Tidal and a lot of streaming services is that you're not gonna be getting all the songs at the maximum bit rate. There's only like a handful of songs that will stream at the highest 24 bit 196 kilohertz. But most songs are gonna be at least at CD quality 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz, which is still completely fine, which I will get to now. So you can see why it's a bit of a mess with streaming services. Uh, if you want a detailed video, check out the headphone show video. I'll link up here and I'll link it down below because I'm sure things might've changed from the time that video came out, but yeah, there's a lot going on there. Now let's talk about my actual testing and what I hear between all the different codecs, streaming services and devices. So the devices that I have used on Android include the Nothing Phone 2. I'm currently using an Asus Zenfone 10, which is capable of aptX lossless. And I also own an LHDC1 dongle. So that allows you to connect uh, via USB-C to any device and stream at 24 bit 196 kilohertz. But like I said, it becomes a bit of a nightmare to make sure you actually are streaming at the codec and the bit rate and the kilohertz that you want. Because on the ASUS Zenfone 10, there's actually no way to know that you are streaming at aptX lossless. So with an earbud like the Sennheiser Momentum 4, you need to go into the actual app settings and change the streaming to aptX lossless. And it will say in the app that it's streaming at 44.1 kilohertz. But when I go into my developer settings on my ASUS Zenfone 10, it'll say otherwise. It'll show the incorrect bit rate and not even show the sample rate. You also have aptX settings customization. So I think by turning on aptX adaptive high res 96 kilohertz, this should force the phone to stream at aptX lossless. But like I said, you just don't know for sure. I ran into the same issue when I was testing LHDC on a nothing phone too, and it was even worse. So I had to manually go to the developer settings, change the bit depth and streaming quality. And every time I would reconnect the earbuds, it would revert to the wrong settings and I would have to change them again. Now LDAC has been around a lot longer. So I think this is just a little bit more reliable. At least on my Zenfone 10, you can actually check the bit rate and it seems to match what LDAC can do. But no matter which high res or lossless codec you use, the big issue I've noticed is that you run into a lot of connectivity problems, especially with aptX lossless. So sometimes I'll just chuck my earbuds in, like walk outside onto the street, like a quiet street, and the connection would just like completely like drop out and the sound quality would become like terrible. Then it will kind of kick back into what seemed like aptX lossless. Sometimes I have to like reconnect the earbuds and connect them again. Just not very convenient. Now I'm not sure if this is an ASUS Zenfone 10 specific issue. And with any high res codec or lossless codec, you, you do expect lower connectivity, but this is mainly gonna be in like busier environments. So on a quiet street, I don't really know why that's happening. And then with LDAC on most earbuds, you're not gonna be able to use multi-point connection, although with aptX adaptive and lossless and sometimes LHDC, you can. It really depends on the earbud and devices and all that kind of stuff. So I think the main use of aptX lossless or high res is gonna be like when you're at home for some intricate listening. So this raises the question, is it even worth it? As you can probably tell throughout this video, for majority of the people, I'm gonna say no, because the improvement in sound quality you get is so minuscule, I honestly don't think it's worth it for most people. I think it's easier to get a wide pair of headphones or IEMs, just plug them in your phone and you're good to go. No connectivity issues. And you know you're gonna be getting decent quality as long as the streaming service is not down sampling. Another issue there still, but anyway. But now let's go through my listening experience going through all the different codecs. So on Android, if you're going from SBC, which is considered the lowest quality when it comes to audio codec, if you go from SBC to aptX, this is gonna give you the slightest improvement in sound quality. I'm usually noticing slightly more detailed treble, slightly richer bass, that's about it. And I would put regular aptX on Android on about the same level as using AAC on an iOS device. Now, if you use AAC on some Android phones, 
It can actually sound worse than SBC sometimes. It really depends on the device you're using. There are so many Android devices out there, but just keep in mind, AAC just works great with Apple devices, similar to Updex with Android. So if I was to go from regular Updex on Android or AAC to one of the high-res codecs, LDAC, LHDC, Aptex Adaptive High Res or Aptex Lossless, you're gonna get that same subtle improvement in sound quality. But it's such a subtle improvement, I honestly don't even know if it's just placebo. And you can look at it like this, let's just say you spent hundreds of dollars on an earbud that has high res audio or Aptex Lossless, you got your high res audio files ready to go or your streaming service with 24 bit 196 kilohertz in front of you that you're looking at so you know it's a bigger number. There could definitely be some placebo going on there. And if you were to give me a blind audio test, let's say with like AAC or Aptex and you go into one of the high res or lossless codecs, I honestly don't think I would guess it right more than 30% of the time. Now, just being honest, my hearing is not amazing, but I have been reviewing True Wireless earbuds over the last four years, so I'm listening to audio devices all the time. I feel like you'd have to be like into mixing and mastering, and if you were to do that same blind test, you might get over 50% right, I honestly don't know. I'm not sure if his tests have even been done. It would be good to do, maybe a future video. But despite all of this craziness and how difficult it is to get all this to work, I kind of understand why people just want to know they are potentially using the highest quality streaming over Bluetooth. So I kind of understand that. And let's just say it is a placebo. At the end of the day, if you're getting more enjoyment out of your music by teeing up your specific earbud with the right streaming service, then who cares at the end of the day? For me personally, I prioritize convenience. That's why my go-to listening device is my iPhone 15 Pro with Spotify. Mainly because I've been using Spotify for like over 10 years. All my playlists are there. I like the recommendations. I don't have to worry about connection issues and the sound quality is great. What will really determine the best audio quality that you are getting over Bluetooth uh, is the actual earbud and how it's tuned. Uh, and once you've EQ'd it to your liking. And a great example of this is the status between three A and C. They just use SPC and AAC for their codecs but they just sound really good and that's all you need. No high-res codecs, no lossless, no dreaded spatial audio, just a well-tuned earbud with great sound. And it's at a reasonable price. So if you wanna check out my full review of the 3 ANC, check it out right here. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on high-res and lossless. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to all my channel members, supporters on Kofi. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for tuning in. Stay picky and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.